Uh, very quickly, I did want to come on here today and do a quick little recap of the entire season four of Selling Sunset. I am super disappointed in myself that I used up my time, my resources, my energy to come on uh, to the House of Aaron and tell all of the house guests to log on to Netflix. I'm super embarrassed because usually Selling Sunset is so good, but I don't know what it was about season four, but it was garbage. Okay. It was trash. It wasn't giving on nothing. Okay. And I've been watching a lot of the YouTube interviews on Entertainment Tonight and Access Hollywood and Extra and things of that nature. Uh, where Heather Ray Young and Jason Oppenheim and Chriselle, uh and even Christine is all up on the television screen saying that season four is the best season of Selling Sunset there is because it includes luxury real estate and fashion and drama. And yes, there is a lot of luxury real estate, which is beautiful. Yes, there is a lot of fashion. Um, you could tell that the producers did tell everybody to step up their fashion game, including Davina, who showed up to the Oppenheim uh, brokerage office in this ugly ass Chanel tweed pink suit, looking a hot damn mess. Okay, girl, it's not your style. It's not your season. You're not that girl. Okay, you're not that girl. You can tell that Davina was trying extra hard to fit back in with the girls and it wasn't working. Okay, sis just wasn't cute. I'm going to just go ahead and be honest about the situation. Sis was not cute and fashion is not your game. Okay, don't play the game. Okay, because you don't have a fighting chance. Davina is super whack to me. Okay, just lame. Okay, and yes, I'm going to hell in because y'all, I am disappointed in myself that I came on here and told y'all to watch this flop ass show when season 14 of Selling Sunset was the worst season ever. Like I said, usually it's good. It's my favorite reality show on, um, you know, Netflix. It's definitely giving Bravo, but with a budget. But I think overall, the reason why I'm so annoyed at the situation is because it was basically everybody against Christine for 10 damn episodes, okay? I told you guys that, yes, Christine is the villain. Yes, Christine is the antagonist. Yes, Christine is the shit starter, okay? She's gonna stir the pot, Okay, she's going to be evil. I got something in my mouth. Hold up now. Hold up, Holiday. Something in my teeth. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, hold on, y'all. G- give, give me one second. Hold on. And as soon as I sit down, it's gone. Oh, my God. Anyways, I apologize. And no, I'm not starting this shit over again. Selling Sunset is not worth it. Um, What was I saying? Uh, okay. Focus, Quentin. Focus. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Damn. It was basically like Christine versus the girls. And my whole thing is, I feel like the producers miss the mark. Okay. I apologize for this. It's another scatterbrain review. Okay. I know. I, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Y'all, I'm getting over a cold. So excuse me. Um, <laughs> long haulers. No, I'm playing. Okay. So I feel like the producers missed the mark because, yes, it's great to have a villain. Yes, it's great to have conflict and all of that stuff. And sometimes it is interesting when you have a whole group of women going against one person. Okay, that's interesting, but only to a certain point. Okay, it's interesting to a certain extent. If you have everybody against one person for 10 damn episodes, it gets a little bit boring. It becomes just one noted. Okay, it becomes one noted. Kind of like that season with uh, Portia and Bolo and Tanya in the room, cobbling peaches and whatnot, okay, and how the whole season was basically centered around that. When you have everybody against one person, when you have everybody talking about only one situation the whole damn season, it becomes very redundant. It becomes exhausted. I found myself at like episode five being very bored and kind of tired and drained because it was centered around you know, centered around Christine versus the girls, okay? I'm so disgusted at the situation that I can't even get it out my damn mouth. So I wrote down a couple of notes. Um, Everybody hates Christine. They talk shit about her the whole season, uh, but yet they never really truly have a one-on-one face-to-face conversation with the girl, except for the one time where Christine did uh, crash the dog party and we saw that Mary... Uh, weird, spazzy ass 
Uh, okay, I feel like that girl on something, but you know, I'm not here to spread rumors and gossip. Or am I? Okay, no. Um, but yeah, Christine ended up crashing the dog party. Mary got upset, but then never confronted Christine, which I thought was punk-ish. Okay, excuse my language, but it is what it is. Um, but then at the doggy party, we get this scene where Christine is basically lying to Emma, talking about, oh, the ex-boyfriend that Emma apparently stole, which is a lie, okay? Emma never stole a man. Everybody has corroborated Emma's story that the boy broke up with Christine and then later on in a whole different time period started dating Emma. Christine is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and now she's coming up with this whole narrative as if Emma stole the man. But we all know that that is just not true, okay? But at the doggy party, Christine and Emma end up having a face-to-face -face, and Christine basically, basically lies and tries to drive a wedge between Emma and and the man that cheated on her by saying that she was engaged to the man, okay, talking about some, he put a ring on it, when everybody has basically corroborated their timelines and it's been found that Christine was never engaged to the man. So Christine, why are you lying about the situation, sis? You look very weird. You look suspect. And I really don't understand what your motive is for lying and creating this false, ridiculous narrative, okay? It's so obvious that you're lying about the situation. It makes no sense because you're gorgeous. You have the best fashion sense out of everybody on this damn show. You probably have more money than everybody on this show with the exception of maybe Jason and Brett. You have the perfect life from everybody's perspective. Why do you feel the need to lie and create a false narrative? Why do you even feel the need to put this much energy into this storyline about an ex-boyfriend when you have moved on and you have a whole husband, y'all got married just a season or two ago, uh, the wedding was beautiful, your husband is rich beyond your whole uh, imagination, and you have a baby. Okay, why are you so fixated on an ex-boyfriend when you have a whole husband and a whole baby and a whole million dollars in the bank and your closet is to die for? Like, I just don't understand the situation. Like, what the hell is going on with Christine? So Christine is definitely giving crazy, okay? And I was kind of disappointed. But um, Christine, girl, you are clicking, okay? You are clicking. But at the same time, y'all, I'm fucking up my desk. At the same time, y'all, I found myself having a soft spot for Christine because going back to my original sentiment, when you have everybody going against one person, to me, I naturally root for the underdog. So if everybody is going against one person, naturally, I tend to start liking that one person, right? And so I found myself, you know, liking Christine and liking Christine um, but it was even then hard to maintain that like for her when she continuously lied about this dumbass narrative. So y'all gotta leave me, uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below how y'all felt about that situation. This review is all over the damn place. I apologize in advance. I'm just trying to get this out because this has been on my mind and in my heart for a couple of days now because I watched the whole show in one day. Um, anyways. Okay. So Christine lies and tries to drive a wedge between Emma and her man child. Christine says that the boyfriend also proposed to her uh, when we know that there is no record of that. Okay, liar, liar, pants on damn fire. The whole season, the new girl, Vanessa from Mexico. Okay, the soap star from Mexico, Miss Vanessa, honey, who is gorgeous, by the way. And girl, I see your BBL. Okay, it's very flattering, sis. Okay, Vanessa is a gorgeous woman. Um, but Vanessa is basically instigating the whole damn episode. How come not one person, okay? How come not one person decided to call Vanessa out for instigating the situation? Now, mind you, okay, I got a burp, hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Vanessa has great intentions. You can tell that she has a very sweet and pure soul. But at the same time, whether your intentions are good, good or bad, sweetie, you are instigating the situation by playing telephone between everybody else and your good sis, Christine. 
Okay, we know that Vanessa is pretty much the only person that's cool with Christine, except for Maya and Davina, which Davina got her head chewed off by Christine because she didn't defend the girl um, over her line about the engagement. We know that Maya is cool with Christine, but at the same time, Maya uh, admitted in the confessional that she really doesn't believe the engagement story. And so the only true friend that Christine really has is Vanessa, but Vanessa is being messy, instigating and playing telephone and trying to play resolve. And again, going back to my original sentiment, shame on the producers for relying on the new girl who can barely speak a lick of English, okay, to play telephone and try to resolve what is the biggest storyline of the season, which is Christine versus everybody else. How y'all gonna put that responsibility on that poor lady? Okay, this girl is trying to sell a house. She's desperate, okay? She needs the money, honey. She's doing it for her sister. And y'all gonna place the burden of trying to get Christine to get along with these other girls. How come nobody called Vanessa out for being a uh, Miss Telephone, okay? Um, then Davina wants to come back to the Oppenheim group. The ladies don't want her back. They say that she's negative, but Jason and Brett ended up you know, having the lady back, which I thought was really interesting. Um, you know, Davina's whack. She's tired. She's lame. She could not sell the $75 million house. You can tell she was trying to step up her fashions, but it really was not working out. Okay. Davina is just a hot ass mess. And I was chatting with one of my uh, friends and they basically said, you know, they were a bit disappointed in Davina because Davina could have brought in another source of conflict as she's done in past seasons, but she was really trying to play nice with everybody because she wanted to so badly be in um, the Oppenheim brokerage once again. And so Davina could not bring us any real drama. Okay. The only thing that Davina brought us was that ugly ass Chanel suit and it just was not working out, sis. Okay. Return it, go back to sex and take it back because it ain't cute. Um, and that was pretty much the whole entire season. So at the very end, uh, Jason has an announcement. He has like this really cute, glamorous cocktail party where he announces that the Oppenheim group is expanding to Orange County. Spinoff alert. No, I'm playing. I don't know if there's going to be a spinoff. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, we do know that there is selling Tampa, which I will be talking about in the near future. But yeah. So they're going to Newport Beach, child, Laguna Beach. And um, that's pretty much it. At the very end, we do kind of get this very dramatic moment at the party where Christine shows up to the party and everybody wants to talk to Christine, but Christine doesn't really want to talk. And then Mary and Christine go at it. And then Heather gets upset and she leaves and Tarek is talking all types of shit. And I'm like, whoa, candy girl. Okay, well, Candy Girl, Tariq, uh, you better watch them B words, sis. No, I'm playing. Uh, Tariq is so cute, okay? I think Tariq is the most handsome man on the show. My personal opinion, I have a really weird taste, but yes. Overall, I will give this season a five out of 10, okay? Yes, we got fashions. Yes, we got to see these beautiful women selling uh, you know, houses um, on Sunset and whatnot. Yes, we did get drama, but I felt like the drama was just one note. It can't be everybody against one person. Okay, word to the producers, word to Netflix, word to the network, word to the creator. Okay, apparently the man that is the founder or creator of Selling Sunset is the same man that, you know, created Laguna Beach and the Hills and all that. Sis, you're supposed to be an OG in the reality TV game. Why did you let this season flop like this? Okay, and then we didn't even get a lick of Jason Oppenheim and Chriselle's secret relationship. Okay, so y'all definitely got to let me know how y'all felt about the uh, situation in the comments down below. I'm going to go ahead and log off. I love you guys. And don't forget to create a great day.